why are we so concerned what other people think of us? And does it really matter what impression we make in the world to strangers? I mean, these are people we're never going to see again. So that's what we're going to talk about, because guess what? All of us do care, even if we say we don't. And then I'm going to talk about how to deal with backstabbers on this morning's Coffee with Colleen. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Colleen. If this is your first time watching, my name is Colleen. I'm a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel, turned image consultant, coach, and mentor. Pretty much a personal brand strategist, but in 30 days or less, I can teach women how to conform everything in their closet to be something that's going to make them look and feel amazing. Today, we are going to talk about impressions and personal branding in a, in a sense, but this is part of a personal branding series that I'm doing for my clients. And when I put together this information, so many people were blown away by it. I thought I would share it with you. And I'm going to give you a small snippet of it because actually this is about a one hour talk. So I'm going to try to keep it really condensed. You know how hard that is for me. Um, and if you're new also across the bottom of the screen, you will see that these are our cappuccino members. And what is a cappuccino member? Well, they're a member of our cafe club. And as a member of the cafe club, they get all the eBooks and notes from the shows and videos and audios and anything that I do. So it's all organized in one neat place that you can just go access it. And then if you're a certain lever, if you're cappuccino, which is the people at the bottom of the screen, they get free gifts mailed to them and um, they're always recognized in all of my programs. All right, so let's talk about making right impressions. So what does that mean? Making a right impression is critical to having relationships in our life. You're not going to win over many friends or co-workers if people don't like you. People aren't going to run work with you. They don't want to sit next to you at church. They don't want to talk to you after church. They don't want to be on the same team with you at work. And nobody certainly is going to be inviting you out to any social functions. And being undesired <laughs> is kind of awkward socially when people avoid you for whatever reason when you're in the store. But often people will say, we should just act natural, just be ourselves. We shouldn't be concerned with that, about what other people think. We should just be ourselves and not be concerned. But just think about it for a minute. Think about what life would truly be like if everyone in the world acted however they wanted to act and just acted natural. What if nobody was ever concerned about anybody else? Think about that. Think about appropriateness and boundaries. Think about how we would interact and communicate with each other if nobody cared, if everybody just acted natural. It would be a hot mess. People would be cutting their toenails at work or at the table or in a restaurant, and people would say whatever they thought. Uh, people would do whatever they wanted. So I'll get back to that in a minute. So, but think about the other side. Oftentimes, if we, we're in a situation where we have a shorter period of time and we need to make a good impression on this other person, think about that. Like a job interview. When you're in a job interview, that is the perfect example of an exercise in self-presentation, in managing what other people think about you. And so you may have to put on, not a front, but what you're trying to do is get across all of your best qualities in a short amount of time. So you kind of manufacture that by, the, by your responses. You know, tell me one of your weaknesses. Well, we've all been through that. We know how to answer that question, right? You talk about a weakness that you used to have that you made into a strength, right? So you are manufacturing your answers to put forward the best version of yourself. So 
it's not an artificial well some people do some people put up an artificial front but they're they're putting forward the truth about themselves but manipulating in it it into a conversation does that make sense so if you don't make a good impression and you have the best resume you're not going to get the job because we as social creatures we like to be around people we like so I, if I have this resume that's really, really good and this resume that's good, but this person was clipping their toenails during the, <laughs> or whatever, during the interview and this person I, I enjoyed being with, if I'm going to have to spend 40 hours, 60 hours, 80 hours a week with somebody, I'm going to pick the person that I liked. So yeah, we do in certain situations put forward our best selves to get across an impression. So yeah, we do care what other people think. So let's talk about decorum, politeness, concern for other people, society, that type of thing. So again, going back to, you know, what if you saw somebody that never brushed their teeth? I was in a situation a few years ago where I went back to school and got another degree. And the person, the young man who was sitting next to me, I don't think he brushed his teeth for like a month. And it was extremely difficult to sit next to him. So do we brush our teeth for not having halitosis? Uh, do we brush our teeth to make sure our teeth don't fall out? Um, you know, because there are grooming standards that we do. But think back, why do we do them? Oftentimes, these are things we do because of habit, because we were trained to do them when we were children. We were taught to brush our teeth. My daughter has her son uh, who right from the beginning, I mean, he was just a wee little thing. And she would take that toothbrush and brush his gums before he even had teeth. You know, the teeth were just budding out so that he got into the habit of, of good oral care. And he fusses about it at night because he wants to do it now. He's almost two, right? So he has to brush his own teeth. So a lot of these grooming standards we learned when we were little. Get up, brush your teeth, change your clothes. Um, comb your hair. Those are all grooming standards that we learned. But think about it. When you're out in public and you see somebody who isn't groomed, whose teeth are grody, whose hair is a hot mess, whose clothing is wrinkled, we inform impressions of people immediately. We have a gut response. We have this reaction. So if we have a reaction about other people, do you think they have a reaction about us? Do you think they look at us and have reactions based on what we're wearing? How our hair is done? What kind of glasses we wear? Whether or not we have glasses on? People all the time are making assessments. And I've talked about this before. And I'm sure you have it by now. And if you don't, I'll give you the link. The seven judgments people make about you in less than seven seconds. And there's actually 11 and it's actually in less than two seconds and the most important of which is trustworthiness and that is determined in point two of a second do people trust you and they will determine that in a millisecond based on what they see and it's a gut reaction so anyway let's get back to your tailoring your self-presentation your personal brand so let's think about, you know, when we say we really don't care what people think about us. In a certain extent, that's true because there's a balance. So when you have low concern about what people think about you, you can pretty much tell by looking at people, right? But if you have a high concern about what people think about you, you have social anxiety. So as with all things, Virtue lies in the middle. We don't want to be so unconcerned with what other people think that we're offensive, but we don't want to be overly concerned and base too many decisions on what other people think of us. So there is a balance. Should we always be, now think about that, should we always be completely honest and open about our deepest and darkest secrets and our greatest shortcomings and our personal problems? This goes back to social convention. When you say to someone else, hey, how you doing? They respond, fine, 
or great, thanks, how are you? It's how we break the ice. It's just a social convention. Now, people with Asperger's are so literal that they don't, they have to learn that that's a social convention. Hey, how you doing? Oh, well, guess what happened to me today? And they go into great detail. We don't want to be around that. That's not, unless it's a close friend of ours, we don't want people dumping all of their personal baggage out under the floor at a um, at an event or whatever. So we want to tailor our conversations, our presentation, how we present ourselves to others in a healthy way, in an adaptive way. So in many situations, when people present their attitudes, their characteristics, their emotions in a completely open, honest, truthful way, it's actually a sign of a psychological disorder. When people are so unaware and unconcerned about their impression or about how their being impacts other people, that's a sign of a psychological disorder. So they're thinking, you know, and if they're, well, I'm just being authentic. Well, I'm just telling you the truth, you know, and I'm not saying everybody that does that has a psychological problem, right? I'm just saying that it can be a sign of a deep psychological disorder. Um, so in don't judge people if they do it because they may have a problem, but then again, you still don't want to be around them, right? So anyway, we won't, we wouldn't want to live in a world where people are never concerned about what other people think about them. So every normal, well-adjusted person, no matter what you say, no matter what I say, oh, I don't care what people think. I do. I'm wearing makeup. I did my hair. You know, I got earrings on. I love my earrings. Uh, so sometimes we think about what we're doing in our presentation. Like this morning, I made sure I knew I was coming on camera. I knew I was going to be talking to y'all. I made sure that my teeth were brushed, I had my lipsticks on, I don't have any lipstick on my teeth, you know, I did my hair and makeup. But sometimes we don't think. So oftentimes when you say personal brand, you're developing a personal brand, it, it conjures up these ideas of deception. And people that are chameleons or whatever that change as they're going around, that's a problem too. Again, virtue lies in the middles. But we all try to put forward our best self. We all try to appear a little smarter than we are, a little more virtuous than we are, a little more responsible than we are. You know, they've done a study. They interviewed all these professors at various universities across the, the country, and they asked them if they were a better professor than the other professors, and 90% of them said, yes, they were a better professor than the other professors. Well, all the professors can't be, you know, 90% of the professors can't be better than everybody else right? <laughs> there, there's got to be a one, two, three, four, five. There can't be everybody that's the best. So we sometimes think less of ourselves or we sometimes think better of ourselves. So again, that virtue lies in the middle. Do we look at ourselves exactly how we are? So oftentimes we impression manage ourselves to put forward what we feel is an accurate and honest interpretation of who we are, whether that's too much or too little. You know, either we think we're better than we are or we think we're worse than we are. So why do we want to mad, you know, why do we want to do that type of thing? Sometimes again, like in a job situation, we have to manage that in the short term because what we need to convey to the other person may not be obvious right away. And Sometimes people will do that in a manipulative sort of way because they want other people to know certain things about you. Never been around somebody like that. You feel like they're like oversharing because they want you to know, oh, I just have so many friends or I have this or, you know, I've done this and I've done that and, and that type of thing. It's like, why are you sharing all this? Sometimes it's really obvious that maybe somebody's really insecure and they feel that they have to bolster themselves up, you know? Mm. excuse me, I've got something stuck in my throat. Um, but you can see this strategy also with feelings. Sometimes 
we may have a poker face, but it's important that we send the impression of what we're feeling. So in order to get that point across, we may make a face or do something or say something to make sure the other person understands really how we're feeling. So that means you care about what that other person thinks because you're trying to make sure that they understand your genuine emotion. So you're not putting on a front. You're not pretending to be somebody that you're not. You're getting across the fact that this is how I feel right now. So it's a tactical move really uh, in self-presentation and you're being honest, but it's also a tactical move to get across. Um, I already covered that. Since I know this so well, I'm like jumping around. So I have to look at my notes. So like, oh, I already covered that. I'm not doing it in the order I intended to. Um, talked about being little and parents teaching you grooming behaviors. Uh, motivated by your desire to influence impressions. And okay. So what about clothing? Of course, you know, this is a big thing for me, right? I want to make sure that people are comfortable in what they're wearing and that what you're wearing get, sends a certain impression. So today I'm wearing denim, so that's a little bit more laid back. Um, if I was wearing uh, like a blazer, it would be more professional. If I didn't have a jacket on at all, it would be more casual. So there's impression management as far as what you wear. We'll go back to the job interview example because that's a prime example. What do you wear to a job interview? Do you just go into swimwear? Do you just go in swim trunks and... Um, you know, a pair of sandals and a tank top. Hey, this is just me. Okay. If that's how you feel. But is that appropriate for the job situation? And as I always say, you dress for the job you want, not the job you have. So yeah, we do when we do dress in a certain way, we do care what other people think. Uh huh. See, isn't it starting to make a little bit more sense now? Because we say we don't care what other people think, but there are all these things that we do unconsciously that says when you observe your own behavior, we do care. And you know what? It's normal. It's good because it's socially appropriate to care what other people think, right? If nobody cared, again, just think what the world would be like. So, Maybe you, you know people that are too concerned, too concerned for their own good about what other people think about them. And then you know people who aren't concerned enough um, that would be a little better off if they were a little bit more concerned about the impression they made, right? So people differ and it boils down to temperament, personality differences, um, and that type of thing. And it's called public self-consciousness in the psychological world. Uh, but the more you think about what other people think of you, you have a high uh, self-impression and the less you think about it, you have a low. So again, that virtue lies in the middle because people with really high social um, uh, consciousness, their public self-consciousness, if it's super, super high, they'll never leave the house without makeup on. For example, thinking of a woman. They'll never do anything because they're always concerned. Even if it's a stranger, they have to put forward their best. I, I felt really good when I started learning this because I thought, man, I run to Walmart all the time with, yeah, you know, I mean, it's Walmart. You know, dress up a little bit more when you go to Target because it's socially acceptable to do that, right? So right there, you can see those memes that are online. Right there, it shows you that there are different levels of dress based on where we're going and what we're doing. But I may dress a little nicer and, you know, I'll probably, actually I do if I'm going to go to Target, I think I do put on makeup, but I won't go full on with like lashes and all that kind of stuff. I'll just dress up a little bit more because it's being aware of that kind of stuff. But people on the other side, and you've probably seen these people at the store as well that show up in their pajamas. Would you ever go to a store in pajamas. I can see if it's an emergency and you're running 105 fever or something's going on, but on a regular basis, would you regularly just go to the store in your nightwear? It's not socially appropriate. So people who are super high in public self-consciousness feel like they're being observed all the time. So they feel like they have to do 
They have to. They can't leave the house. I know people that don't want their spouses, their um, like women that don't want their husbands to see them without makeup on. I think there's deeper issues there. But anyway, this shows up in many aspects of people's behavior. People that are super high in public self-consciousness will look in the mirror when they're out. They're, they'll look for mirrors to look into when they're out. Um, they'll, they'll never leave the home unless they're perfectly groomed. And they're more concerned about their physical appearance and they, they constantly are doing things to make themselves appear better. Um, and then on the flip side of that, there's the people who absolutely don't care. And then, you know, I showed that one picture of the guy with the mohawk and stuff, but there's people that do it, do dress in a way that attracts attention on purpose. They're, they're stirring the pot, they're doing, because they are concerned about what other people think. And they wanna make sure that they set, send the message that this is who I am and this is what I stand for. And they do it on purpose to purposely stand out. So again, there's people, you know, don't don't be quick to label, <laughs> you know, or judge because there's people that just don't care or there's people that care so much that they dress in a specific a specific way or behave in a different way or do things um, with a distinction in mind, if that makes sense. So people who are, again, are high in public self-consciousness, um, they really want to project a better image of themselves. They're not necessarily projecting a truly honest opinion of themselves all the time. They're trying to make an effort to make themselves look better than they are. Does that make sense, right? So uh, people also with this po high public self-consciousness tend to be um, more uh, anxiety, nervous in social situations. They don't want to go places. They're concerned what other people will think and say, everybody's going to be looking at me, uh, that social anxiety thing. So the other people just don't care. They just go wherever they want, do whatever they want, and tend to be kind of like a bull in a china shop. So understanding that, first of all, we all care what other people think. And we may not realize it consciously. There are so many things we do unconsciously that we don't observe, but we do care what other people think. And that's a good thing. That makes us a happy social person. It makes us normal and adjusted, right? If we care too much what people think, that can be a problem. And if we don't care enough what other people think, that's also a problem. Both can fall on either side, can fall into maybe needing to speak to a counselor. And you know how I feel about counseling. I am all about it. I think it's important to have someone in your life that you can turn to, to go to, that's a professional, whether it be your pastor, your priest, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, um, someone in your life that you can turn to that can give you an honest interpretation from the outside looking in that's familiar with people's behavior. Because your best friend is going to tell you what a best friend tells you. Your best friend's going to support you in whatever you say or do, right? So I just feel that it's important that if you don't care what anybody thinks, I think it would be nice to talk to a, a, a specialist. Let's just say that, a specialist. Um, and sometimes you have to, I have a show, you have to look up the show I did, I forget the name of it, but I have a whole show on how to find a counselor for yourself. Because I went through, I think three or four before I found somebody that, you know, there's always somebody that graduates at the bottom of their class, right? So there's, you need to go through a few people before you find somebody. You know, I, I had a spiritual director once that was not good for me. And I didn't realize that at the time. And he was my spiritual director for years. And I had another priest told me, eh, I think you need to find a new spiritual director. And once I removed myself from the situation and saw it, and I looked back on my life and the decisions that he told me to make, which is not what you're supposed to do. Um, yeah, it was a bad thing. 
And that's how I learned that you just, you have to go through a few people before you really get that. So now what about people who actually do backstab you? So in essence, we don't care what other people think, but we do care, especially if it's not true. Or we shared something with somebody and they spilled the beans. And that's one of the ways when people, and and I say this to people who say, "I, I don't care what other people think. And I said, do you have, um, we all have like a deep, dark secret, something we've done, something we've said, something that's happened in our lives, um, somewhere along the line that was really embarrassing. And it may be not like a deep, dark secret, but it may be something that's really embarrassing. And you think about it now and you still kind of blush. So let's say you're with people that you like. And if they knew this tidbit, this brief flash of a moment in your life, they may think differently of you and you're in conversation and somehow it comes up and you know your mom walks into the room and and says remember that time that you know blah 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 blah. oh gosh that was when I was a teenager and rebelling and I made those stupid decisions as a teenager and I don't want anybody to know about that and now it's out and you're embarrassed if you truly didn't care what other people think you wouldn't be embarrassed you would you would have told the story right? So there's those situations. But anyway, so what to do with somebody that's toxic? And of course, um, you know, there is the toxic people there. The link is there in the uh, show notes um, of how to identify the toxic people in your life. So make sure that uh, you get a copy of that if you don't have it already. But what to do with the backstabber, who is one of the top 10 toxic people, First of all, it's called preventative medicine. (laughs) Um, Don't give away trust too soon. Guilty, guilty, guilty. I give away trust too soon, often. And it's something I battle with. I trust people before they have earned my trust. So don't give private private information to people until after they've earned your trust. Number two with preventative is don't participate in gossip yourself. Because I guarantee you, if somebody is gossiping about somebody else, and you're in a circle of people or you're one-on-one with this person, and they say, oh my gosh, did you know such and such about somebody or did you hear? If somebody is talking about somebody else to you, guess who they're talking about when you're not around? That's right. They're talking about you. So don't participate in gossip. And sometimes the person they're gossiping about to you is the person they're going to go back to and say, well, you know, I was telling Colleen about your, you know, I mentioned to Colleen that something about you and she said that you blah, 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 blah. So now, I mean, backstabbers and gossips, they like to stir the pot, right? So if they're not gossiping about somebody else, they're gossiping about you. So don't participate in gossip. You walk away say, oh, you know, they're a friend of mine. Please don't talk about them. You know, stop it in its tracks. Gossips and backstabbers want to gain something, and it's normally power. They want to gain power over other people by knowing these secrets and manipulating what other people think about you. So that's what they're after. So don't underestimate them, first of all. Um, And it's something to think about, This is kind of on the recovery stage. But if somebody is gossiping about you and stabbing you in the back, that means you're in front and they feel like they're behind you and they feel like they have to stab you in the back to get ahead of you. So ultimately, it's about insecurity. It's about power. It's about control. If you are at work and you're being sabotaged or backstabbed at work, start documenting it. Keep specific documentation and keep a record before you go to the higher ups and do something about it. Um, and there may be times where you want to confront the person in the work environment first before you take it to upper management. Or, it, you know, that's my preferred way of handling things, but sometimes that's not the best way. It depends on your situation. So the most important thing to do, first of all, is document it if you're at work. All right. So now what are you going to do? You find out that somebody's backstabbing you and gossiping about you. First of all, stay calm. Realize that most people don't like gossips unless they themselves are a gossip. So if people are gossiping and backstabbing in general, 
they may not be that trustworthy a person and other people may not find them very trustworthy. So stay calm. Emotional responses are 99.9% .9 of the time, not the best way to, re or re re to respond to something. Revenge and retaliation are never a good option. It's not wise. First of all, you don't know what that backstaper is capable of, truly, truly capable of. Um, and they are only powerful when your back is turned. That's where they get their power. If they had any sense of self-respect, they would confront you directly. And if you've ever confronted of a gossip, as I have numerous times, um, they wilt in front of you. They're embarrassed that they got caught. They're, they're even more embarrassed because they feel this sense of power that you would never, you would never have the audacity to come and speak to them about it. So that when you do confront them about it in a classy, calm way, it blows their mind and they tend to crumple. Not always. They tend to crumple. All right. So if you've gotten to the point where you feel that you need to confront them, you, you need to be calm and classy about it. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding about such and such. I've been told by other people that you have said these things. Uh, and I just find it hard to believe. So I just wanted to clear the air. Can you tell me about that? And then throw it on them. Okay. I've heard there's been these false rumors about me. Do you know anything about that? And then watch them backpedal and their eyes will shift and, and they'll, you know, their body language will change. And, but, or... It could have been a misunderstanding. The person who told you might have been the gossip who was trying to stir the pot, right? You don't know. So if they said it came from this person and you confront the person, do it calm, be classy about it, and hear them out. If they start to explain or apologize, it could have been a misunderstanding or it could be malicious. So listen. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. Listen. Give them enough rope to hang themselves because if they're guilty and you give them enough rope, they will hang themselves because guilty people like to talk. And also, you, you, know, you know this with your kids. If you say, did you have the cookie? No. You know, but if they, it's like, no, no, I wasn't even home. I don't even like cookies. I mean, they, me thinks thou dost protest too much, right? So a guilty person is going to, rattle on and on and on unless they have a psychological problem and then you've got a different issue so just prove them wrong by staying calm and classy handle it your actions will speak louder than your words so if you run in there and start yelling and screaming and especially if it's in a work environment that's not a good way then you need to drop these backstabbers out of your life this is not this is a toxic problem this is an issue they are not going to change if they're gossiping about you, they're gossiping about other people and who wants that in their life? You don't want that to be around it. Now that it's been dealt with, you've, if it's come to the point where you've confronted them, you've confronted them, you've cleared the air, you have dropped them out of your life, it's time to move on. It's time to let it go. Don't let these things fester in your mind because then what do we know about our memories? I've talked about this before. 80% of our memories aren't accurate. So when you're upset about memories of things that have happened, don't trust your memory because your memory will blow things out of your proportion. Remember, your brain is dumb and your brain tries to protect you and will always portray you as the innocent party, <laughs> even when we're not, right? <laughs> so be careful about you know your memories. But when something like this happens, I'm, you know, it's a forgive and forget. You, okay, I forgive you, but you're out of my life now because I'm not an idiot, right? We're not doormats. We're not meant to keep, keep people in our lives just because we're Christians doesn't mean we keep people in our lives that use us as a doormat. Um, we confronted the issue. We've, we've dealt with it. We've resolved it. We've now eliminated this person from our life. We said, you know what? I may have trusted this person too soon. Maybe I did give them private information. Maybe I didn't. Maybe they just created it, which has also happened. Um, but in either sense, it's time to turn your back on it. Otherwise, you're still giving them power over your life. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you thought this was uh, helpful, then share it with somebody else. And let's see if we can get a better sense of 
I don't care what other people think about me going on in our life. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you next time. Let me find my animation. There it is. <laughs> Gotta find my closing animation. Take care. God bless. Bye. All right. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Oh, now I have to edit. I forgot to.